I'm Rachel from Mrs. Rachel Brady. Uh, Mrs. Rachel Brady is a blog, um, I'll link to it below. It's a YouTube channel, obviously, and also now a book club, would you believe? Uh, so I'm just a normal stay-at-home mum of two, soon to be three, hence today's video, which is a 31-week pregnancy update. You can see I've got my coffee. It's absolutely amazing. I'm enjoying it so much. And I've even made some notes. This is gonna be quite a hefty update i'll try and kind of keep it short <laughs> so much has happened i've gone from having the most uneventful pregnancy ever to like the most eventful stressful pregnancy but um it's all fine hence the kind of update today hence why i'm in a good mood and i'm just really really happy to report that everything is fine but i'll tell you what happened but first a slurp so basically, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you probably will know this. I went for my 28 week scan three weeks ago and everything was fine. I went on my own, said to Adam, don't bother coming, it's fine. And uh, yeah, they found two anomalies. So too much amniotic fluid. And also they found that the baby had an enlarged ventricle on the brain. So basically, in the little cavities in the brain one of them was a bit too big and it was filling up with fluid so the sonographer told me this and said it's just measuring slightly over normal as your amniotic fluid is also measuring slightly over normal don't worry too much we are going to have to tell the consultant and she'll talk to you about it but try not to worry and see the consultant who quite frankly she didn't mean to but she really did scare me because she was like oh this is very grave this is very serious it could be numerous syndromes it could be infections it could be lots of things i leave this, the antenatal appointment really really freaked out like oh my god my baby's got something wrong with his brain and i've got too much amniotic fluid went home remembered a few things that she told me google google, google found out it's called the brain thing the enlarged ventral ventricle is called ventriculomegaly. The amniotic fluid, let's just talk about that for a second, it was slightly over and so she said right you're gonna have to come back in for a gestational diabetes test which I did, it was awful, you have to fast and you feel really weak and stuff like that. I just thought that isn't gonna come to anything and it turned out I was, I did have gestational diabetes. So we went for the MRI, really really nervous, Adam came I sat there thinking I could be about to find out that my baby is brain damaged. So anyway, this amazing doctor said, look, everything's fine. The brain is completely fine. Yes, it has an enlarged ventricle. It's looking a bit asymmetrical, but that's not unusual. Some babies do have that and, and it's not growing. It's just over the mark. Don't worry. Oh my God, so relieved. We've been told to go home and enjoy our pregnancy. So I was away for the weekend in London, came back, it's Tuesday today, this was on Sunday, about to walk the dog with Adam and the kids, saw a, a, a package that I hadn't yet opened. I thought it was something that somebody was due to send me from Instagram, and so I nearly didn't open it. Anyway, tore it open, quickly had a look. It's a letter saying you've got rubella, a suspected diagnosis of rubella. It also came with just like no reassuring helpline number, no reassuring communication. It's from Public Health England, Rubella is a serious infection. Obviously, I was like, okay, what, right? So I started to Google on my phone, and we thought I'd just do it on the dog walk and just Google a few things. I, I, we, set, we set off, and I was like, oh my God, this is serious. If you have rubella, it's very, very rare. Don't want to freak people out. This, this is so rare. Um, rubella is so harmful to pregnant women it will almost definitely cause serious birth defects in the baby. So this is what I'm reading. Obviously freaking out. I've just been told I've got rubella. How long have I had it for is the key question. Um, if it's at the start of your pregnancy, there's an 85% chance your baby will have serious birth defects. I think a lot of people, when they find that out, well, not even a lot of people, because a lot of people, this doesn't happen to a lot of people because it's rare. There is a very strong thing of like, are oh, you going to terminate because the birth defects will be so severe. As your pregnancy moves along, if you contracted it later and later and later, the, the effects can be less severe. But I'm thinking in here, we've had, a, we've had a brain scan, that was all good. But brain scans wouldn't pick up blindness, deafness, and these are things that can happen as a result of the mother contracting rubella. Rang the midwife, she was amazing. She said, calm down. I was a bit like uh what does this mean what does this mean and she was like okay i need to speak to the doctor and i'm going to ring you back just basically had a really good chat with the doctor there at the hospital and said 
it was very confusing when she said there's two sets of blood results one of them is showing that you have the chroma you have the antibodies which is a good sign so i thought i think i had it when i was little and that's what that's from but then i spoke to someone on, on a facebook mums group uh who was really useful and helpful and she said if the, if you're showing up antibodies in one of them it must mean that you were vaccinated because this is why it's so complicated two to three years ago they stopped testing women for rubella immunity because it's become so rare to be not immune so rare thanks to mmr vaccine so she said if it's showing up that you've had some immunity then you probably will but what was what was the red flag was this second result which i'd recently had a couple of weeks ago the blood test when when it, when it was like right we need to test you for infections you've got this all these things going on on that blood test it showed inconclusive no evidence of antibodies i can't tell you why that is the doctors don't seem to be able to tell me why that is we went to hospital yesterday saw a specialist who'd had some more results faxed through from a lab in sheffield saying we can verify that this patient doesn't have rubella we haven't got it we've just had this faxed through and i just don't really understand what happened she said this is second time i've ever seen this happen and I, she said it's very badly handled by public health england they send this letter out the mother is frantic thinking she's got rubella and then she hasn't i was so tired i feel like we've had kind of three weeks of stress and complications thank god I feel, but more than anything i'm like tired but so grateful feeling so lucky because i know so many women go through these complications and don't have a positive result and it's just making me feel really like a bit emotional I feel really blessed that like this pregnancy i'm not taking it for granted i'll never if i'm pregnant ever again i'll never take it for granted a normal boring pregnancy which is what i've always had before other stuff to update you on i have been spending money like nobody's business and you know we thought we had all these things from the other kids i've got an eight-year-old and an almost six-year-old and i thought no we don't have to buy anything we've got all the stuff well the bugaboo b that we had for b um turned out to be incredibly stiff to put up and down something's going on with the seat it's not really worth selling i don't even think i get 100 quid for it if i'm gonna keep it as a spare and keep it in the car and that can be my my, my city day out buggy because round here obviously i live in the peak district really really rural and i'm gonna walk the dog every day not across fields or anything but bumpy country lanes um and i was very kind of like should i should i get a new buggy anyway i did i'm just gonna show you here is the buggy so as you can see i've put the carry cot on uh it was from i got everything from john lewis basically just in case there's a problem you can send it back so it's the city mini gt by baby jogger i had this exact buggy in a double when i had the two um when I had Arthur and B quite close together, he was only just two when I had her. This just clicks on and off. I'm not gonna show you now, but I'll do a proper review and a proper vlog about this buggy once I've used it for a while. So basically I ordered the carry cart, a word of warning, I ordered the normal carry cart to go with the City Mini GT and they actually, John Lewis rang me and said, it's not actually compatible with the City Mini GT. I don't know why it doesn't say that on the website. So you have to go for the deluxe. So that's the deluxe carry cart. It clicks it off. And then that seat there comes a little bit higher and here we have the hood that will go on it and the snuggly foot muff thingamabob and also that's the car seat that we've got just gone for the maxi cozy the maxi cozy cabrio fix is compatible with this buggy you do need to get adapters for it which weren't actually available from john lewis but as I say, I'm going to keep the Bugaboo B in the car and that I have got a set of adapters for that. So that's my buggy. Um, so what else have I bought? So I've bought like just £120 John Lewis white car. We're going to put that up tonight in the nursery. The nursery's been painted. I've also upcycled some drawers. You might have seen those on Instagram. Now we've got like a baby bouncy chair. I'll show you that in another video. Um, just the cheapest one that John Lewis had. I've got, I've got like a baby play mat like a kind of you know an activity mat i always find like that's like a total essential item isn't it so what else have i got i've got some new clothes from john lewis as well so i will show you all of that in my nursery tour video which will be coming up probably in about a week or something like that i'm starting hypnobirthing this week so i wasn't gonna do hypnobirthing because i kind of dipped my toe in with b anyway my friend in the village is a hypnobirthing teacher and i had a coffee with her and she said look 
do the course she's going to do it with me half price because i've done a bit of hit the birthing before um it's four sessions i just feel more than anything like this baby deserves as much fuss and attention and mental space from me and this is an opportunity to do that. I don't believe for one second that hypnobirthing is going to give me some kind of orgasmic pain through birth. I've had two children. <laughs> I know how my own mind works. I'm not anxious about the birth any more than a normal sane person would be anxious about birth. Um, I'm not. And I, so I don't feel like I need this hypnobirthing. Like I'm not like phobic about birth or anything. I think just setting myself some time aside each week um, over the next few weeks is going to be good. NCT, you may have seen my IGTV video when I was like, should I do an M NCT course? I was this close to finding one and I couldn't find a date that fit. I've got loads of social things in the diary on the run up and I've been doing lots of social things, trying to see all my kind of friends, female friends that I haven't seen for ages before the baby comes because I feel like I ain't gonna see them. Well, I'm gonna have other things on when the baby comes. <laughs> So I've like put dates in the diary to keep me busy. And so as a consequence, I didn't have any weekends free for NCT. So I'm not gonna do NCT. Adam's probably over the moon about that. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna maybe just see if I can just go to classes and make friends that way. It's not like I haven't got friends. I've got so many friends. It's hard to keep up with them. That sounds really stupid, but no, genuinely, I've got lots of lovely friends. I just think it's nice to have a couple of friends who have got a baby at the exact same stage so you can all get together and bore each other to death about poo and stuff like that and crack nipples and things. So what's next? It's 31 weeks. I have got nine weeks to go assuming we go that long. Sometimes with gestational diabetes they induce you early. I am big. I'll show you my bump in a minute. What's next is to finish the nursery, put the cot up. I'll do a video for you. Then packing uh, a case for me and a little bag for baby. I'm going to do that probably earlier than most people would because I just got a feeling. Birth plan. That is something I want to do. There's some brand new information since like I had B, which was nearly six years ago. For example, I found something online about um, uh, not bathing your baby for like, some people don't do it for like two weeks and also don't bathe yourself for two weeks. I was like, this is new, what's this? I nearly forgot, I'm gonna show you my bump. Okay, so here we go so guys this is me at 31 weeks um i am like normally like size 10 12. everybody has been going on from the start about yes you're really big you're really big um but yeah I folded these shorts down <laughs> they're not maternity shorts so i'm very lucky i've got no stretch marks um which is good i feel like baby is really low <laughs> people also keep saying that but i think that's what boys normally do, they hang out quite low. So that is my bump at 31 weeks. So a few people who are following me along on here are, are at the same stage as me or similar stage. So hi to you guys especially. And uh, leave a comment below what stage are you at. Leave a question below if you are going through the whole verticumal megaly thing or about gestational diabetes or if you have even experienced the crazy rubella letter and all that. Just, yeah, just comment below and say hi. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, guys, and hit subscribe if you haven't already for more family, food, home, and style content. Bye!